Hi everyone, good day. This is Teacher Joanne of Mathroom, and in this video, we will be having once again a lesson in general mathematics, and the topic is finding the domain and range of 1 to 1 and its inverse. So for this lesson, the learning objective is you should be able to find the domain and range of 1 to 1 and its inverse. So the essential question that we need to answer is how to find the domain and range of 1 to 1 and its inverse. To find the domain and range of an inverse function, we need to follow certain properties. If f inverse exists, then the following statements are true. First, f inverse is 1 to 1. Second, the domain of f inverse is equal to the range of the function. And third, the range of the f inverse is equal to the domain of the function. Focusing on items 2 and 3, this will be our guide in finding the domain and range. So once again, when we find the domain and range, all we need to remember is the domain of a function is the range of the inverse, and the domain of the inverse is the range of the function. Let us take a look at this example. Let's say we have the function f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Let's say we have the values of x inputted to this function, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. By putting these values of x, we have these values of y or f of x which are negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. These x values compose the domain of the function, while these y values are the values that are found in the range. While for the inverse of the given function, we have f inverse of x is equal to x minus 3 over 2. And as you can see on the values of x and y, these are the values found on the first table. The x here is now the y values, and the y here are now the x values. So in getting the domain and range again, we should simply switch the values of x and y. Now, let us have an example of finding the domain and range without the table of values. For the first example, we need to find the inverse function of f of x is equal to 2x plus 3 and find the domain and range. So first, let us find the domain and range of the given function f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Recalling the type of function and its graph, we can easily find the domain and range of this function. As we can see here, we have a degree of 1, which makes this a linear function. And as we all know, in a linear function, the graph is a diagonal line that extends infinitely to both directions or to any direction. So here, the domain and range of this function are both set of real numbers. So we have set of x such that x is an element of real number. And for the y, or range, we have y such that y is an element of real number. Next is, we need to find the inverse of f of x is equal to 2x plus 3. So we need to apply the four steps that we discussed in the previous video. So the first one, replace the f of x with y. So y is equal to 2x plus 3. Second step, interchange x and y. So x is equal to 2y plus 3. Third step, solve for y. Therefore, we need to isolate the 2y. Remove the 3, so we have x minus 3 is equal to 2y. We need only the y, so we need to divide both sides by 2. We cancel this. And the fourth step, write our final answer in terms of f inverse. So we have f inverse of x is equal to x minus 3 over 2. To find the domain and range of this inverse function, we need to apply the properties mentioned in the previous slide. So if you still remember, the domain of the function is the range of the inverse. So since we have set of real numbers for the domain, it's the range of this function. And the range of our function is the domain of the inverse function. Since this example contains set of real numbers as the domain and range, we just have to follow. But again, to find the domain and range, we just simply interchange the domain and range of our one-to-one -one function. 
Second example, find the inverse of f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 8 and find the domain and range. So first, let us find the domain and range of f of x is equal to the square root of x minus 8. As you can see in this function, this is a radical function. The domain of this should not include the values that will make the radicand negative. Let's say we have negative 1. Negative 1 minus 8 makes this negative 9. And that cannot be a radicand of this function. So to do this, we need to have x minus 8 limit the values from 0 to positive. So we need to set this to greater than or equal to 0. Then we solve for the values of x so we have x greater than or equal to 8. So these are the only values of x that can be substituted to the value of x in our function. If we have values less than 8, let's say 7, 6, 5, and so on, the, those values will make the radicand negative. So this gives us the domain of this function. As for the range of this function, for every real number value of x greater than or equal to 8, there is a corresponding real number value of y that is y greater than or equal to 0. So here are the domain and range of our given function. So let us now find the inverse. So first, change f of x to y. Second, interchange x and y. Third, we need to solve for y. Since y is inside the radical sign, we need to remove the radical sign. And how are we going to do that? By getting the squared of both sides. So we have x squared is equal to the square of y minus 8. So here we have x squared is equal to what will happen to this. We cancel the radical and the square. So we now have y minus 8. Let us manipulate this in order for y to be isolated. So we have x squared plus 8 equals y. Since we're talking about inverse, we need to change this y value to f inverse. So we have f inverse of x is equal to x squared plus 8. As you can see in our answer, this one is a quadratic function. And as we all know, for a quadratic function, it is not considered one-to-one. -one. Therefore, for the domain of this function, we need to limit the values. So to do that, we will just simply interchange the domain and range of our given function. So the domain x greater than or equal to 8 becomes the range of our inverse. So we have set of y such that y is greater than or equal to 8. While the range of our function y greater than or equal to 0, this becomes the domain of our inverse. So we have set of x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. For our third example, we have find the inverse of f of x is equal to x plus 4 over 3x minus 2 and find the domain and range. So we will be having the same procedure. So first, find the domain and range of the given function f of x is equal to x plus 4 over 3x minus 2. This function is an example of a rational function. And to find the domain of this function, it consists of real numbers excluding the value that will make the denominator 0, which is given by 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, so that we'll be able to find that value that must be excluded. So solving for x, we have 3x is equal to 2, divide both sides by 3, so x is equal to 2 thirds. So this is the value that must be excluded for the domain. As for the range of this function, we need to identify the degrees of numerator and denominator. So for the numerator, the degree is only 1 since we have x. The denominator, represented by m, we also have 1. Since the degree of the numerator is the same with the degree of the denominator, following the procedure in getting the range, the range is the ratio of the leading numerical coefficients of numerator and denominator. So here, the leading coefficient is 1. 
the denominator, the leading coefficient is 3. So we now have set of y such that y should not be equal to 1 third. So this is the value that is excluded for y. Now, let us find the inverse function of the given. So first, we need to change f of x to y. Second, interchange x and y. Next, we need to solve for y. So first, we need to remove the denominator. So how are we going to do that? Multiply both sides by 3y minus 2. So here, we need to distribute x to 3y minus 2. So we have 3xy minus 2x. On the right side, we cancel 3y minus 2. So we only have y plus 4. So what is the next step on this? We need to combine those terms with y on the left side. So we have 3xy minus y is equal to 2x plus 4. We're looking for the value of y, so we need to isolate y. So factor it out. So we have 3x minus 1 is equal to 2x plus 4. To have y on the left side only, we divide both sides by 3x minus 1. Cancel. So we have this as the inverse. So the inverse of the function is f inverse of x is equal to 2x plus 4 over 3x minus 1. And to find the domain, we will just simply interchange these two. So the range becomes the domain. So we have set of x such that x is not equal to 1 third. And if, we, if you would like to check if this is right, take a look at the denominator, then equate to zero, you will be able to get one third as the value to be excluded. And as for the range, we'll just simply copy the domain, but we have to change it to y. So we have set of y such that y is not equal to two thirds. And to check if this is right, look at the degrees. Then since they're the same, we need to get the ratio of the leading coefficient, which is two thirds. So here are the answers. After giving you examples on finding the domain and range of 1 to 1 and its inverse, this is not the time to test your understanding. You may pause the video so you can answer this item. Let's check your work. f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. The inverse of this is f inverse of x is equal to x squared minus 1. As for the domain and range, we have this. Domain is a set of x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Range is set of y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. And as for the domain and range of our inverse, we will just simply interchange the domain and range of our function. So we have the domain set of x such that x is greater than or equal to 0 taken from the range of the function. And the range of this inverse is set of y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 1, which is taken from the domain of the function. Second example to the same procedure, find the domain and range and the inverse of this function. Let us now check your answer. The inverse is 3x plus 1 over x minus 2. For the domain and range, we have x not equal to 3, for range y not equal to 2. For the inverse, interchange the domain and range of the given function. We have set of x such that x is not equal to 2 for the domain, set of y such that y is not equal to 3 for the range. Were you able to answer all the problems that I gave you? If yes, great job! So take note of the following. To find the domain and range of the inverse function, we need to follow the properties for the domain of the function is the range of the f inverse and the range of the function is the domain of f inverse. In shortcut, just simply interchange the domain and range of the one-to-one -one function. So here is the end of our lesson. I hope you have learned something in this video. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Take note, Math Room by Teacher Joan. Click on the notification bell to be updated. Bye everyone! See you on our next video.